everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hiba and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Manchester. So interviews are daunting, especially if they're for medicine and especially if they're online. Having your interview online adds another layer of complexity and worry when it comes to your medical school interview. But don't worry because this video is going to be a foolproof guide on how you can do well in your online interview and be stress-free throughout the whole process. In this video, I'm going to be going through 10 tips which are going to be specific to the online and technical side of your medical school interview. It may not actually sound significant, but these tips are actually going to make a huge difference in making sure that you come across as professional and that you make a good impression in your online interview. My favorite tips are going to be the last two tips in this video so make sure you don't leave before hearing those ones. If you're looking for guidance on how you should actually prepare for the interview or how you can make sure that you give the best interview you possibly can on the actual day, I've made two incredibly helpful videos on my channel which goes through all of those things. Please make sure you check out those, this video is kind of incomplete without those to go along with it. If you watch all three videos and take on board all the tips, I'm almost certain that you're going to do really well in your interview and that you're going to get a place at that medical school. Anyway, let's get started into the first tip on how to do well in your online interviews. So the first tip is to make sure you position your camera appropriately. Now it sounds really small and it sounds like it doesn't really make a difference but it actually does. You want to make sure you position your screen as if you are actually looking ahead at an actual person sitting in front of you. You don't want to have your laptop or device in your lap so that you're kind of looking down at it from above and you don't want to have the screen too far back so that the camera cuts off at your chin. Just make sure you're positioning your laptop or your device so that the camera is at eye level. This is going to make it really easy for you to talk naturally during your interview and to make it feel like you're actually sat with that person. Make sure your head and shoulders are in the center of the screen and that you're not just onto one side and make sure there's a bit of space above your head so that you're not sat too close to the camera, a bit like how I'm sitting right now. Placing your laptop or device on a normal desk or a normal table that you may have at home usually puts the camera below eye level. So this means you might need to put a few things under your laptop, maybe a stack of books or something, just to bring it up and to raise the camera to eye level. The second tip is to make sure you keep your device plugged in throughout the interview. Yes, even if your device is fully charged, I suggest that you sit near a power socket and make sure you keep it plugged in throughout the interview. During a video call no matter how good your device is you'll be amazed at how quickly the battery drains it literally drains like crazy the interview can easily overrun and you may need your device for longer than you initially anticipated and while you're in a stressful interview it's really easy for you to forget to keep checking the battery of your device and the very last thing you want is for it to die whilst you're in the middle of your interview so i just make sure to keep it plugged in so that isn't even something you have to worry about at all it's always better to be safe than sorry for reasons similar to the ones that i've just given in tip number two i I'd say tip number three is always to keep a backup device with you during your interviews. This may be your iPad or your family member's laptop or even just your phone. Just make sure you keep a backup device with you. You never imagine yourself to be the person that's going to need it until you actually become that person. Tip number four is to make sure you know who to call if anything goes wrong during the online interview. The internet is not always reliable and the last thing you want is for you to become disconnected for some reason or anything bad to happen during the interview. But it can happen. I'd suggest really carefully reading the emails that you've been given by the medical school about your interview because in those emails somewhere they should have given some information about who to contact if anything does go wrong during the interview. If you've looked far and wide and you can't seem to find this information then I strongly suggest that you get in touch with the medical school and ask them to give you some contact details and either a phone number or an email that you can use to get emergency help if you have any trouble during the interview. Make sure you have these contact details, this email or this phone number handy with you throughout the interview write it on a post-it note and stick it next to your laptop make sure you have it with you so that if anything goes wrong you can quickly get in touch with the help team and they can get you back up and running with the interview this one is kind of a given but make sure you eliminate all of the background noise when you're giving your interview if you're on your laptop which you probably will be you'll need to keep the volume up to actually be able to hear the interviewer so make sure you put it on do not disturb or silence your notifications so that even though your laptop volume is up you don't get the sounds of all of those notifications or those emails coming through while you're in your interview. I know fresh air is really important, but just to be safe, I'd close all of the windows before I start my interview, just in case your neighbor decides to start mowing the lawn whilst you're in your interview, which always seems to happen at the worst of times. Of course, also make sure your phone is either switched off or on silent. And part of eliminating any background noise is also making sure you let your family members or your housemates or whoever you live with know 
that you're going to be having this interview and not to disturb you during the interview. You want to make sure everyone is aware and no one starts coming in to ask you if you want anything to eat or your siblings don't start fighting in the room next door to you or your housemate starts playing really loud music. All of those things you want to avoid by giving them a lot of notice and letting them know that you're going to be in a really important interview. Tip number six is to make sure that your background and lighting is going to be optimal for the interview. You want to make sure that your background is clean. You want it to be a private, tidy, distraction free background as you can imagine a dirty background or an untidy background is not going to give the right impression obviously don't be sat inside your wardrobe or in your basement or in another dark corner in your house make sure there's enough light in the room that you're sitting in ideally coming from a window next to you or a window in front of you if you aren't able to meet these requirements at home and you know that there's going to be background noise or a distraction or you won't have enough light or there won't be a good setting then you should look into asking your college or university about a spare room that you might be able to use for the interview as soon as you possibly can. You should also do this if you know that your connection isn't good at home. So that brings us to point number seven, which is to test your device and test your connection before the interview day. You want to make sure that your Wi-Fi is strong enough to let you be on a video call for about two to three hours and also give your device a test drive to avoid finding out on the day that your camera or your microphone has actually stopped working. Tip number eight is to make sure you look smart and this isn't just by making sure you dress in a shirt and a blazer. You want to make sure that you have a good straight upright posture and make sure you don't slump down in your chair as you get further into the interview. It's actually quite difficult to remember this for the whole two to three hours that you're going to be in the interview so make sure you stay attentive in this area and make sure that you are looking smart for each interviewer that you interview for no matter how far along in the interview you meet them and also of course just make sure you are dressed in the video interview as you would be for a face-to-face -face one. We're down to the last two tips now. These are my two favorite tips that I wanted to give you. If you've been enjoying the video so far or found it useful please can I ask that you subscribe to my channel and also like like this video as well it really really helps me out and it lets me know that you found this video useful so tip number nine is to try not to look at any notes so traditionally notes haven't been allowed during medical school interviews different universities might now have different rules on this considering they know it's easy for you to have notes with you whilst your interview is online so making it permissible means that no one can really cheat however i will still say even if it is allowed you will do best in your interview if you don't have notes with you if you're not trying to use notes at the same time and that your focus is fully on the questions and on the interview that's going on in the moment. Firstly, it's going to be really obvious if your eyes keep wandering to a different area of the screen whenever you want to answer a question. If your medical school hasn't allowed you to use notes, then it's going to give off a really, really bad impression. So I just wouldn't even risk it if you haven't been given permission. Even if it has been allowed, those candidates that just give an answer themselves without the use of any notes are definitely going to score higher because they'll have shown the interviewer the ability to answer questions on their own accord. If you have notes with you, you're just going to be a lot more distracted your focus is going to be on trying to find where you've written the answer to a certain question that they're asking rather than actually listening to the question properly. Overall, I just think it's going to have a negative effect on both how you do in your answer and also how the interviewer is going to score you. Number 10 is to make sure you show your personality in your interview. Over video, it is much more easy to look serious and really timid and much more difficult to show your personality. I know from making these YouTube videos that in some videos where I'm really focused to try and give a lot of information and come across as really really serious it's quite difficult for you to portray your personality over video so make sure you just smile and stay friendly and look really attentive throughout the interview you're going to need to use both verbal and non-verbal communication to do this make sure you're always nodding when they're asking you a question or if they're trying to explain something to you to show that you're engaged and show that you're polite and make sure you're just talking and communicating in a way that shows them just how pleasant you are and how pleasant of a medical student you're going to be. You are going to need to be just a little bit more enthusiastic than you would in actual life, just because it's so difficult to portray body language over a video call. But if you keep reminding yourself of this throughout the interview, then I'm sure you're going to have an amazing impression on whoever interviews you. So guys, those were my 10 tips on how to do well in your medical school interview, specific to the online aspect of the interview. Please can I remind you to make sure you watch those two other videos that I've made about medical school interviews. The first one is about preparation, and then the second one is about the actual interview on the day. They're going to be really helpful. And again, if you put the tips across these three videos together and make sure you take them on board, I'm sure you'll do really, really well in your interview. I wish you loads and loads of luck with your interview. If you have any questions or anything else you want to ask, please just leave it in the comments in my YouTube videos. I reply to all of my comments. Make sure you do subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful and like this video as well if you found it useful. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.